framework, capacitor, ionic. What the heck are these things and what does it mean to do ionic development? Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, welcome to the Ionic YouTube channel. My name is Logan Braid, I'm developer advocate here at Ionic. And today we're here to answer the questions, what is Ionic and what does it mean to do Ionic development? While this might seem pretty straightforward to our seasoned Ionic pros, I decided to tackle this topic because this inevitably happens when talking about Ionic. Hi, welcome to the booth. How can I help you today? Hmm, yes my good sir, what, 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 what is... Iconic. All joking aside, this really got me thinking. Ionic has a lot of different products and services, and it's gotta be a challenge to keep track of, especially if you're new to software development, mobile development, or just Ionic in general. So let's grab some coffee, let's sit down, and let's talk it out. But while I'm off grabbing some coffee, be sure to check out the Ionic community page. The Ionic community page offers incredible links to Ionic's blog, forum, and Discord to help you jumpstart your Ionic journey. The blog offers useful resources relating to performance, tutorials, and product announcements, while our community of Ionic developer experts can help answer any question you may have on the Ionic Discord. Links for these resources down below. Okay, got my coffee, so let's jump into it. So what is Ionic? Ionic at its core is essentially a company that creates tools and services that help you do app development. Where we're different from a lot of companies out there is that the tools and services we create help you do cross-platform development. So the idea is that you can create once but deploy many different places. And once you have created those applications, those cross-platform applications, being able to deploy it in a way that is streamlined and easy and helps you navigate the app ecosystem, right? Because we all know developing web, app web applications is difficult. Creating mobile applications is difficult. So we want to try to use the tools that we create to help make it a lot easier for developers to deploy on the web or on mobile and just make overall everyone's lives easier. The other idea is that we want to create tools and services that help you leverage existing talent within your organizations or even just yourself so that you don't have to learn a ton of different new skills to be able to do that development. In order to accomplish this, we've created a lot of different tools. Uh, this includes the Ionic Framework, Capacitor, AppFlow, and Portals. Now we're gonna dive into what each of those tools are and like what they mean as we talk about what Ionic development is. But that leads us into it. So what is Ionic development? So I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what Ionic development is, um, especially, I mean, just even individual developers and companies, we all kind of have our own ideas of what Ionic development is. But to us, Ionic development is using any of our tools and services in order to help you during the app development and deployment process. And the cool thing is about the tools and services that we offer is that you don't have to use our entire ecosystem. You can really piecemeal it. So if you wanna use just Ionic framework, you can use the Ionic framework and nothing else. If you wanna build cross-platform applications, you can use something like Capacitor and not use any of the other tools. And that's what makes us really different from a lot of companies out there. We do offer products that let you, or products and services that let you leverage all of those things, but you absolutely don't have to. You can use as much as you want, as little as you want. We really want it to be open uh, and let you define really what that is and how you want to leverage it. With that being said, I think it's worth going into the different products that we offer uh, because some of the confusion around what Ionic development is kind of uh, relates to the tools that we have. So the first product I want to talk about is the Ionic Framework. And the reason why I want to talk about the Ionic Framework is because typically when people hear about Ionic development, they're thinking about developing using the Ionic Framework. At its core, the Ionic Framework is just a UI toolkit. It helps you design user interfaces. And the good part about the Ionic Framework is that the interfaces that you design are completely cross-platform. So if you use this toolkit and you have a web app and you're like trying to get it to run, you're, you're trying to get your web app to run on mobile, it allows you to have a consistent design experience from web to mobile. I will say it doesn't help you necessarily do the deployments or do the cross-platform development, but it is an, uh, a toolkit that allows you to create user interfaces that are consistent across the board. So the next product I wanna talk about is Capacitor. 
And where some of the confusion kind of comes in with capacitor is that Ionic's not in the name, but it is an Ionic product, it's open source, and at its core, it allows you to create cross-platform applications. So you can take an Angular application, a React application, a Vue application, use Capacitor and then deploy it to iOS, on Android, or even the web. It allows you to take your apps and truly make them cross-platform. Uh, whereas the Ionic framework is just a UI kit, this is the real meat and potatoes that allows you to take your application and make it cross-platform. And just like the Ionic framework, you don't have to use it with any of our other tools or products. It helps to use our other tools and products to do that deployment, but you can really piecemeal it if you want to. So if you already have an existing web application and you just want to turn it into a mobile application, you can totally do that, even if it doesn't use the Ionic framework to make that happen. You don't have to use any of our tools together. We think it makes it easy. We try to make it as easy as possible for our developers to use whatever tools and mix and match with our tool set um, to bring down some of the complexity and make it so that you don't have to do huge overhauls when you're trying to make these cross-platform applications. So the third product I wanna talk about is AppFlow. Now AppFlow is not open source, it is a paid product, but AppFlow at its core is a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool. So you can take your iOS applications, your Android applications, your capacitor applications, your React Native applications, or even Cordova applications, and deploy them into the app stores. Now, the good part is, just like our other products, you don't have to use them in conjunction with our other tools and services, but this essentially makes it easier to do your deployments uh, without having to go through the tedious process of deploying to the mobile app stores manually. And coming from an, a mobile development background, doing iOS development, uh, I can personally speak to just how difficult it is to do deployments to uh, the Apple App Store. This is supposed to help navigate that, especially if you're not used to navigating the app stores. So what's really nice about AppFlow is that it helps you with the whole app publishing process. There's really nifty features like live updates so that you don't have to you know, re-push your applications in the app store if you're using Capacitor. Um, and then also it has a ton of automations built into it so that you don't have to sit there and do things manually. You can actually create automations and deploy your, your cross-platform applications, your iOS apps, your Android apps directly to the app stores without the headache of doing it manually. So now the last product I wanna talk about is Portals. And similar to AppFlow, Portals is not open source, it is a paid product. But what we started realizing with all the tools and services that we offered was that it was mainly geared towards web developers trying to get into the mobile app dev ecosystem. And after talking to uh, companies, customers, and just developers in general, we started realizing that there was a whole subset of, of companies, teams, and people that were already developing using the native tools. So they would, you know, develop using Swift or Java Kotlin and deploying to iOS and Android respectively. And that, you know, they might be working with multiple different teams, but some teams might not be, uh, some organizations might have multiple teams. So they might have a web development team. They might have a mobile development team, but that there would be idle times between those two teams. So like mobile development teams could be developing features, but the actual web development team might have a lull in development. So the idea was, is how could we leverage the existing talent within these organizations to continue development and help reduce some of the difficulties with the mobile app development process? Uh, the other thing is that if you have uh, native development teams on staff, so if you have iOS team, an, an Android team, you would potentially have to be developing the same feature twice for both platforms. And what we realized is that, hey, we could actually reduce development time by embedding web applications into native mobile applications. And so that's where Portals comes in. Portals allows development teams to use web development technologies in native iOS and Android apps without having to do like develop things twice or like having to hire on extra talent to get through um, you know more features. So it just helps streamline the development process if you're already in the native development ecosystem. 
where the, the real power comes in for portals is is if you have a uh, multiple development team so if you have a native mobile development team and a web development team you can actually utilize them in parallel to create features for your mobile applications because we realize like every application probably has like a sign in sign up process so instead of developing individually on ios developing it individually on android that creates a lot of user stories it's a lot of time and a lot of resources to essentially develop the feature twice you can use embedded web applications develop it once and then put it on those native mobile applications without having to you know create this experience twice so it streamlines development it saves time saves money it really frees up resource time so that you can work on other features without having to do the same thing twice so now there are two things that i really do want to include in this they're not products per se but i feel like there's a little bit of confusion about what these things are so we have two different clis there's the ionic cli and then there's the capacitor cli and the important thing to remember about these CLIs is that they leverage the products that I've talked about. They're just tools that are used to help streamline the process. So the Ionic CLI um, involves using the Ionic framework and Capacitor in order to build uh, your applications. So you're not, it's not necessarily a different product. It's just using what already comes by default with Ionic framework and Capacitor in one short package or one small package. The other thing I want to talk about is the capacitor CLI. Now the capacitor CLI does not use stuff from the Ionic framework. It is just the tools necessary to use capacitor to make your, your applications cross platform. So it's really connected to the capacitor product, but they're not separate products. They just utilize the four different products that I've already talked about. And with that being said, that is what Ionic is, that's what Ionic development is, and also all the different products and services that we offer and what they are. Now, of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please be sure to check out um, the Ionic community page. We have a blog, we have a Discord. So any questions you may have can definitely be answered there or even just leave a comment on this video. We'll be sure to do our best to answer. But otherwise, my name is Logan Braid. I'm a developer advocate here at Ionic. It's been a pleasure talking to you guys today and I hope to see you later. Thanks.